Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome to a Roblox visual tutorial and um, today we are going to be learning how to create simulator style UI as you can see. Um, simulators, if you haven't noticed, are the popular trend in uh, Roblox games and they kind of follow the same UI design pattern. Um, you have on the left side usually is uh, it shows the currencies and there's usually buttons for the shop, usually pets. So that's what so that's what we're gonna be creating today. Here's a couple examples. As you can see, it's a very cartoony style and it's actually not as hard as you think. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people wanna learn how to create this. So without further ado, let's get started. Now over here I just grabbed a screenshot, a picture, and I just blurred it. This is what I'm gonna use for my background. It gives me some color variations. Let's take a look at this. Um let's create this thing on the side right now. So right here. Um, this is a rounded rectangle, so you want to go over here to yours should be on rectangle tool If you have never used this tool before You just want to click and hold and go down to the rounded rectangle So we're going to click on this and the radius we're going to set this to about Maybe 55 And by the way, my canvas size, let me show you real quick Go to pixels, it's 1920 by 1080 So usually when I make UI, that's the this is the canvas size I use, so let's get started with this. Click and drag, as you can see, create this shape right here. Um, if you see this blue outline, after you've you know, created a shape, you just wanna hit Control, Shift, and Itch on your keyboard, and that will make it disappear. We're gonna go back to our Move tool, and to center an object, you wanna hit Control, A on your keyboard, because that'll make a selection around your entire canvas. And if you're on your Move tool, up here you should see these alignment icons so it says align horizontal centers you click on it as well as this and it will properly center your object to the middle of the canvas all right the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the color to white and we're gonna right click and go into blending options now over here we want to apply stroke and here you could choose whatever color you want I'm just gonna follow the example and just go with the Kind of a uh, orangish yellow maybe and i'm gonna put my size to about eight now we're gonna go to our ellipse tool and create a new layer now before you create this shape you want to hold shift and alt on your keyboard and this is going to um scale it from the center so we're gonna create it about i say this size if you want to readjust the size you can just hit ctrl t on your keyboard and just drag from the corners while holding shift and alt and it will scale properly from the center put it right here and we're gonna change the color to a green so let's go something like something like this will be good actually man there we go we're gonna go into blending options and then we're gonna add a stroke you can actually just use the eyedropper tool right over here click this and we're gonna select a lighter shade just like that. Now, if you see this um, little plus symbol here, it's a little bit different. This is actually very easy to create. All we gotta do is we gotta go back to our random rectangle, make sure it's on something above, maybe something above, maybe 50. And on the new layer, you wanna make sure your color is white and you just wanna drag Control Shift X to get rid of the, the blue, Control J to duplicate. Control T, right click, and you rotate 90 degrees clockwise. As you can see, now we can just select both of them and resize it as such and just rotate it. Let's just make these lines just a little bit thicker, a little bit too thin. There we go. And then we're just gonna make these a little bit smaller. Now we're gonna move on to this little coin icon over here. Start off with ellipse tool, hold shift and alt as you drag. Create that and we're gonna double click over here and we're gonna change the color. There we go. Now you want to duplicate this ellipse, so you can just hit Ctrl J on your keyboard and we're gonna go back to the ellipse tool and we're gonna go up here and we're gonna disable fill and enable our stroke. I'm gonna bring this up to about maybe 15. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think 15 is fine. And then we're gonna go to our bundling options. This time, we're gonna go to color overlay and we're gonna choose the same color. 
Now we're gonna go to drop shadow, bring the spread all the way up, the size all the way down. Yeah, move this some just like this. Now, now all you gotta do is you gotta select a color that's darker than your um, than the main color of the coins. I'm actually gonna add a stroke to the original, so let me change this from green to a darker color. And as you see, the whole thing just kind of comes together a little bit more. And since we created this drop shadow, the stroke is not going all the way around properly, so we just have to apply another drop shadow. There we go. Increase the size a little bit. As you can see. All right, there we go. Now, in order for us to create a shine, a shine effect like this over here, we're gonna select both of these. If you hold control, you can select multiple layers. I'm gonna have these two selected, and I'm gonna right click and convert to smart object. Now, I'm just gonna move this to the middle. Now, what you wanna do is you're gonna take your pen tool, this is tool over here, this is a little icon, create a new layer. Make sure your color is on white, and we're gonna click up here, down here, and go all the way around. Also, you wanna make sure it's set on shape and not path, and fill is enabled while stroke is disabled. Now, you wanna go in between these two layers you see over here, and you wanna hold Alt as you approach this, and this icon should appear. When you see this icon, you wanna click down, and as you can see, it's going to clip the shape we created into the coin. Change the blending mode over here to overlay, and as you can see, that gives it a little shine effect. Now, for the little icon in the middle, you could choose whatever you want. You could, you know, go on Google or you could create your own for whatever currency is in your game. So, let's just take this, we're gonna control G, and now I can just resize this and put this right over here. And I'm just gonna select everything we've created so far and group it all into one. There we go. And I just put it right over here. Now, obviously, if you're importing this to studio, you want to export every single frame here separate. So the coin is gonna be one separate thing. This green plus sign is gonna be a separate thing. And the background is gonna be a separate thing. Now, I wanna add a little shadow just to bring it up a little bit from the background. So I'm gonna take this group here. And if you hold down your Alt key, while you drag down, this will actually duplicate it, as you can see. And I'm gonna hit Control E to flatten the group into a single layer. Now you wanna hold Control while you click on the thumbnail of this layer. This will select, um, this will make a selection around the, the layer. Switch to black, and then you wanna hit Alt and Backspace on your keyboard. Now what that did right there is it basically just filled the entire layer with your foreground color. Now we're just gonna take this, and we're just gonna use our arrow keys and move it down just a little bit. So just like that. And I'm gonna go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Just give it a tiny little blur. And just like that there we go and as you can see we have successfully completed a currency so what it's called the currency bar for a simulator style game so that's gonna be it for this tutorial this is only part one if you enjoyed this video and it helps you make sure to leave a like and we are going to continue this series and we're gonna finish the rest of the parts and um, yeah that's gonna be it and uh, I hope y'all enjoyed. Peace.